Hello, folks. Well, we had quite a bit of excitement over at the Kingfish's house this week. And it all happened when the Kingfish jumped at the conclusions without making sure of the facts first. You'd think for a man that's been married to Sapphire as long as he has, he'd understand her and trust her. But he didn't. And I hope he's learned his lesson. Well, it all started innocent enough. Oh, hello, Marilyn. Oh, Mrs. Stevens, I'm so glad I found you home. I just had to come downstairs to see you about something. Well, come on over and sit down. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Stevens. You know, I was just telling that song you play on your phonograph all the time. I didn't hear it today, though. Mrs. Stevens, I'll never play that song again. But what's the matter, Marilyn? Daddy has refused to ever let me see Richard again. Really? Yes. Richard and I want to get married as soon as we finish high school. Daddy says I'm too young to even think of marriage. Well, Marilyn, <laughs> maybe he has a point there. But I love Richard so completely with all my heart. Love him with every fiber of my being. <laughs> oh, but Marilyn... Oh, Mrs. Stevens, I'm sorry. I guess I shouldn't expect you to understand about love. You're married. <laughs> oh, but this is the price I have to pay for being a woman. <laughs> well, things are high all over now. <laughs> is there anything I can do for you? Oh, yes, Mrs. Stevens. The reason I came down here this is my diary. I've been writing it in shorthand so Daddy wouldn't be able to read it if he found it. But now, the way he feels about Richard, I'm afraid if he does find it, he'll tear it up and throw it away. Mrs. Stevens, would you keep it for me in a safe place? I'll be glad to, Marilyn. I'll put it right in here. I found a shelf. And if you don't mind, I'll be dropping in every once in a while to write in it. Well, that'll be fine, Marilyn. Thank you, Mrs. Stevens. <laughs> Flaming youth. Hello, George. Hello, Andy. Hello, honey. Me and Andy going up in the apartment. Andy, I ain't feeling so good. Must have been something yet. Oh, that's too bad, Andy. Oh, that ain't nothing much. Well, I'm going shopping. I'll see you later, George. Okay, honey. Come on, Andy. We'll see what they can do for you here. <laughs> well, Andy, we'll see if we can find some pills or something to make you feel a little better. But, Andy, what did you have for lunch today, anyway? Oh, regular meal. Some chop suey and meatloaf. Some corned beef and cabbage, a hamburger, and a little spaghetti. Well, that could hurt you. Yeah, the only thing I can pick a kingfish, I must have got poison on a rusty fork or something. Well, look at you. I think your biggest trouble is that you are suffering from an unbalanced diet. There you is, loading in protein, carbon, hydrate, and you ain't getting enough calcium. I always keep a little extra medicine here in the closet here. Mmm, moth exterminator. You don't think you got any moths in your stomach, is you? Oh, oh there's the stuff, Andy. Take two or three of these. Uh, that ought to put out the fire. Yeah. Mmm, what's this? A diary. Mmm, had it hit up there back in the medicine bottles. I didn't know Sapphire kept a diary. Maybe it's old when she had when she was in school or something. No, Andy, uh, this year is all right. Uh, there's the date right there. I wonder why she hid it back up there. <laughs> Holy smoke, she writing in Egyptian. Oh, no. <laughs> That's somewhat Sapphire learned when she was a secretary. Hmm, I wonder why Sapphire would keep a diary. Then on top of that, why did she write it in shorthand? Well, who knows? I used to go with a gal who wants to keep a diary. And every time she went out with a fella and something interesting happened, she'd come back home and read a few lines in the book. But she done give the thing up after she met me. Oh, she did, huh? Yeah, she done filled the book up the first day. 
<laughs> Only shorthand. Henny, I don't like this. I remember the last mad woman that kept a diary with that case up in Boston. And they found her husband's body floating face down in the reservoir. Well, listen, Kingfish, that'll never happen to you. No, I guess not. You never get up to Boston. <laughs> Look, Andy, as Sapphire's husband, I got a right to know what's in this diary. I'm going to take it to a public stenographer and have her decode the thing for me. Come on, Andy. Yeah. up the last of them items there, ain't you? Yes, sir. <laughs> Look like she hit something there. <laughs> something funny it happened when Sapphire was marketing, uh, probably at the butcher shop or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who is your butcher these days, Kingfish? I don't think the boy ain't never said nothing that funny. <laughs> triangle and it looked like I had a lop. Well. <laughs> I'm gonna put this diary back where I found it and let her keep writing in it. It's the only way I can track this thing down and find out what it's all about. Yeah, that's your only chance, all right. Andy, the one more thing. I don't want a word of this to get out to nobody. Oh, you can depend on me, Kingfish. Andy, you promise you won't say nothing? Listen, Kingfish, I is your friend. My lips are sealed. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> Amos, I've been rebating in my mind whether to tell you something. It's a super secret. And I don't know where I ought to say nothing about it. Well, that's up to you, Andy. If you want to tell me, fine. If not, that's all right, too. Well, now, the man that told me this secret then asked me not to say nothing about it, but I'm telling you in strictest conference. So when you tell somebody else, you tell them not to say nothing to nobody. <laughs> Look, Andy, maybe you'd better not tell me at all. Now, I can't use no names in this. Now, let's see how can I do this. Oh, yeah. Now, here's the thing. There's a married man we'll call X. He's got a wife we'll call Z. Now, she's keeping a diary we'll call A. Now, the diary shows that she's in love with another man we'll call J. I'll be kidding, because I don't want nobody to know who I is, neither. Okay, Andy. Now, look. X is so because A shows that Z is in love with J. And K was a witness to the whole thing. I was there when it happened. Annie, do you mean to tell me that the kingfish suspects Sapphire of going with another man, and you know it all about it? Maybe I should use different letters. <laughs> Oh, hi, Kingfish. What's the latest bulletin in the diary? Why, Andy? Oh, it's all right, Kingfish. Amos done broke the code. Andy, I thought I told you to keep your big mouth shut. Well, I know. Boys, this is getting worse all the time. <laughs> A few moments ago, when I left the apartment, Sapphire was singing some song. Boy, tell me what is this thing, anyhow. 
Da, 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 da. It ain't Yankee Doodle. Uh, it's never come back to me, Kingfish. But what's the latest thing Greenboat done put in the diary? Boys, uh, listen to this. Today at 3 o'clock, my darling Richard is going to call me on the telephone from the corner drugstore. So near and yet so far. I must tell him of my final decision. Say, this is serious, Kingfish. Well, Enos, at least I'm going to see what my competition is. Andy, me and you are going to be at that drugstore at 3 o'clock and get to the bottom of this thing. Okay, Kingfish. I can't believe she'd do a thing like this. But I guess Sapphire feels that by falling in love again, she can recapture her youth. I don't know, Emma. It's going to be pretty hard to capture anything that got away that long ago. <laughs> they're going to make the phone call from. We ought to be able to hear everything from here. Yeah, we got to catch every word, because this is when Sapphire's going to make her decision, whatever it is. Hey, buddy, there's no spoon. Oh, sorry. Now, uh, what do you have? Uh, nothing. We're just going to wait for a phone call. <laughs> Wait for a phone call without a spoon. Oh. <laughs> uh, maybe that's him, Kingfish, and he's just getting changed. Well, we'll know in a second. He's a good looking guy, too, ain't he? Yeah. I thought sure that was him. Yeah. Well, you ain't gonna have to wait much longer. No, I don't guess it'll be too long now. <laughs> oh, what's that, Andy? Oh, it looks like something that just crawled out from under a jukebox. Carter, can I have change for a quarter, please? Why, certainly, Richard. Thanks. Got to call Mira, then. Well, here comes Donald Duck again. <laughs> See, kid, uh, don't use that phone. We expect somebody to make an important phone call. Well, this is a public phone. My dime's as good as the next fellow's. Look, kid, I don't want no trouble from you. Don't use that phone. A phone is a public utility. And I'm one of the public. Oh, you is, huh? Yeah, and I have my right. Okay, but make it snappy. <laughs> Hi, honey. This is a big mood in your diary. Richard, I really missed you. Yeah, I really missed you, Dreamboat. If you want a Dreamboat. Andy. That's my rival. Yeah. <laughs> no, maybe you could buy him off with a bag of marbles or something. Are you serious about that? You really mean it? Well, say, whose dime is this anyway? Uh, pardon me. Oh, nothing, Dreamboat. Now, will you please tell me again what you said before? I can't believe it. Come on, let's go off the stool here. Anyone else feel the earthquake? What? Oh, he's all right now. Oh, somewhere around 80 or 90. Yeah, 80 or 90. Yeah, if you ever know how old Sapphire was, he'd fall on the floor. Okay, now, tell me again, Dreamboat. Richard, a love such as ours happens only once in a lifetime, and we must not let anything stand in our way. We've got to get married this afternoon. Well, Dreamboat, I can't this afternoon. We've got to track me, Miss Jefferson. Well, do you really think we should? After all, I'm awfully young. All right, if you think so, tomorrow then. 
It'll be better then anyway, because that's the day I get my allowance. You hear that, Andy? Whatever day's up to, she ain't going through with it till he get his allowance. Yeah, I guess this time she's looking for a man with an income. <laughs> okay, it's definite for tomorrow. Bye, dreamboat. <laughs> I can't understand how Sapphire would do a thing like that. Well, you know how it is, Kingfish. A lot of these older women get interested in flaming youth. Flaming youth? Why, he ain't even a flicker yet. <laughs> the only thing I can do, wait for tomorrow's entry in the diary. <clears throat> Just the way the kid walked. Looks to me like the kid's half froze. Oh, the kid had a rough day yesterday. The thing I can't figure out is how Sapphire could be interested in a young kid like that. <laughs> oh, that's all. She's a pretty smart woman, you know. Yeah. But what's even harder to figure out is why a kid like that would be interested in a woman the age Sapphire is. <laughs> Maybe the kid's out scouting for his father. Oh. <laughs> Boys, oh, this is terrible. I just had the day's entry in the diary translated. Sapphire and the kid's gonna get married. Married? <laughs> now, take it easy, Kingfish. Sapphire's already married to you. I know, Amos, but she's probably breaking up. Probably gone but jerk or something. You know, for a while, I thought this was all a joke. But now this really sounds serious. Yeah. Uh, what you gonna do, Kingfish? Beat your sapphire? No, Andy. I going right to the source of the trouble. I gonna see this fella, Richard. I found out from the owner of the drugstore that he go up here to Sutton High School. Uh, and you going right up there, huh? I going up there and meet him face to face and really have it out with him. <laughs> Hello, Father. This is Marilyn. You don't have to worry about Richard and me keeping company anymore. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, Marilyn. Do you really mean it? Yes, Father, I really mean it. Because we're getting married. What? Marilyn, Marilyn, you can't, you can't. Hello, Marilyn, hello. Hello, Mrs. Stevens. This is Marilyn. Mrs. Stevens, would you do me a favor and tear up my diary? The diary? Well, is it all over, Marilyn? Yes, Mrs. Stevens. Richard and I are going to write the final chapter. <laughs> the final chapter? I wonder what she means by that. You're getting too much arch in your back at the start. Gosh, I can't seem to get it right. Now, just take it easy. The coach wouldn't have sent me in here with you if you didn't think you could do it. Well, I'll do the best I can. You see, something real important is going to happen to me this afternoon. I've got a lot on my mind. Yeah, well, start paying attention now. Let's try it again. Go. Start your egg like this fast. Something I can do for you, mister? I'm looking for Richard Whitaker. They told me I could find him down here. Well, the rules of the school are the students can't have visitors until after 3 o'clock. Well, is he down here? What does he look like anyway? Uh, that's him there. So that's going to marry my daughter? Come again, mister? He's going to elope with my daughter. He's going to... Marry your daughter? Yes. What a little rascal. You've been sneaking over to the girls' playground. <laughs> Say, this is a lot more serious than you think. I want to see him right now. Well, it's a quarter to three. You'll have to wait 15 minutes. Orders of the school. Uh, you can sit right over there. How am I 
been doing? Pretty good, from what I understand. Uh, let's try that start again, huh? Go. <laughs> Where are you going, mister? You're not allowed in here. Get out of my way, mister. I gotta talk to that boy. Ain't nobody talking to nobody around here till school's out. Coach's orders. I gotta talk to that boy. But you can't do it unless it's absolutely important. Well, that boy is running off with my wife. Is that important? <laughs> yeah, well, uh... <laughs> That boy is loping with my wife. Well... I knew I had some hot shots in this class, but that one's a real sleeper. <laughs> oh, what are you doing there? You got a stomach ache or something? No, he's, he's doing a lot more running than I thought he was. Mister, please let me talk to him. I got to stop it. I'm sorry, mister. Whatever your personal problem is, it don't belong here during school hours. So you'll have to wait over there till school's out. Okay, little beaver, on your feet. Look at him there with the big letter S on his shirt. And I know what he got it for, too, smooching. <laughs> now, this is really going to be something to see. Yes, ma'am, what can I do for you? I want to see that boy Richard over there. You, too? Well, you just have to wait. There's two weddings ahead of you. But this is important. Well, how was my little cradle snatcher today? Cradle snatcher? Look, George, what are you doing down here anyway? I come down here to stop a wedding. Stop a wedding? What have you got to do with it? You keep out of this. I just want to get my hands on that boy. I'll show him something. Listen, I was here first, and I get first crack at him, and I'm not waiting any longer. <laughs> Nobody laying a hand on that boy till three o'clock. <laughs> me tell you? Suppose you tell me. Yes, I'd like to know it too. That boy's going to run away with my daughter. You must be Marilyn's father. Marilyn? Who's Marilyn? Well, what you complaining about? I don't know who nobody is. <laughs> nobody can make heads or tails of this. Now, let's be sensible. Now then, Mr. Jackson, what is it you wanted to say? I came down here to break up the marriage between my daughter and that up there. Well, I found out from a diary Marilyn was keeping in my apartment that she was planning on getting married, and I came down to break it up, too. Now then, George, what was it you had to say? Well, uh, the same thing I said when I was in the third grade. The sooner I get out of this school, the better. Come on, <laughs> And there we was, me and Sapphire, and the girl's father, and the coach. We was all standing there. And there was Richard hanging up there like a dried kibber. Well, Kingfish, did you ever tell Sapphire that you thought it was her in the diary? No, boys, I fumbled out of that one. But the thing that I can't understand is why I was silly enough to think that was Sapphire. Well, not as silly as you think, Kingfish. I can understand the woman being attracted by the younger sister. Yeah, after all, look at you, Kingfish. You was a lot different than when Sapphire married you. Andy, I think you got a point there. Yeah, the women is always trying to stay young to keep their husbands interested. You know, I don't guess it'd be a bad idea for men to do the same thing. Amos, I think you got something there. Hmm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Clara George is fine. As a matter of fact, he got up early this morning, and I don't know where he is now. <laughs> yes. Well, oh, I hear his key in the door now. I'll speak to you tomorrow. Hello, Je
folks. I'm Amos. You'll have to excuse me. I'm in a hurry today. I got to go down to the court. Yes, folks, my old friend the Kingfish is in trouble again. It all started last Tuesday night. You see, it was Kingfish and Sapphire's 20th wedding anniversary coming up. So after supper, Sapphire decided to do a little gentle hinting. Here comes the bride, all dressed in white. Would you cut that out? The neighbors will think the cat fell in the washing machine again. <laughs> what is it now? George, don't you know what day tomorrow is? Well, the day being Monday, taking a wild guess, I'd say tomorrow would be Tuesday. <laughs> George, don't you remember what happened 20 years ago tomorrow? 20 years ago? Oh, yeah. That's the day they sunk the main. <laughs> That's the day we was married. Well, I knew they were some sunk. <laughs> you is just the meanest man alive, George. Don't nothing ever mean nothing to you. George Stevens, you just ain't got no heart. But Sapphire, hmm, something must happen to the old gal. She can't on there like Tallulah Belthead. <laughs> oh, my head. If these pills ain't doing your headache no good, maybe I ought to get you a phenol barber pole. Handy, I had a terrible night last night. Sapphire locked me out the bedroom. I had to sleep on the sofa. You did, huh? Handy, I is a heel. I done forgot every wedding anniversary we ever had. But I'm gonna make it up to Andy. This is our 20th wedding anniversary. I'm gonna show her that I got a heart. I'm gonna show her that the faith and the confidence that she's put in me through all these years was really something. I'm gonna make it up to her, Andy, with a beautiful gift. You is, huh? Yeah, Andy. <laughs> in this anniversary, I may even go as high as, uh, six bucks. Oh. <laughs> uh, Lightning, where's there a good woman's store at around here? Well, now, there's the Barn Town Variety Store down the street there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Never miss it. Uh, Miss Kingfish. We're sitting ducks if we're caught here now. Where's the gun? In here. What'll we do? Out the back way. Well, Andy, we ought to find something pretty nice in here. Hey, there's a lot of bags over here. Yeah. All kinds. A mess of them, too, ain't there? Mm. Now, here's a nice one. Uh, this is what you call stimulated alligator. Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Hmm, now this one ain't bad. Only six bucks, too, tax included. Yeah, I like that. Nice and heavy, too. Yeah. May I help you? Uh, yes, miss, I'll take this bag just as it is. Oh, thank you. I'll bring you your chicken, too. Yeah. Well, Andy, our trouble is over. <laughs> Yeah, Andy, we're gonna wrap that puss up real nice like it come from Tiffany. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know this show is a heavy bag. Feels like there's something in there. Oh, I guess this is one of them fitted bags with the mirror and stuff inside. You better open it up there, son, and make sure there ain't no price tags in it. Yeah. Mirror. Comb. Lipstick. Let's see that lipstick there. Hmm. And them novelty lipsticks made in the shape of a bullet. Did you ever heard of a cosmetic firm 
By the name of Colt 45? No. Holy smokes! A pistol! Yeah, he's full of them Colt 45 lipsticks. We ain't. No use getting panicky here until we make sure of our ground. This thing is probably one of them there uh, cigarette lighters they make in the shape of a gun. And they done put it in the purse there as an added uh, inducement. Oh, yeah, that's what it is. A cigarette lighter. Yeah, oh, yeah. Sure, ain't it? And in order to make the thing work, all you gotta do is press the trigger like this. Don't you think you ought to take that thing back to the store and find out what goes? Oh, no. Find us keepers. You know, Andy, I'm just thinking, yeah. I could take that thing over to the pawn shop. The hockabilities of this thing is unlimited. <laughs> yeah. Something like that ought to bring 30 or 40 bucks. Uh, uh, careful, that kingfish. Yeah, after supper, I think I'll run over to one of the pawn shops. Yeah, but be careful with the gun, kingfish. I think it's against the antitrust laws to carry a gun in New York. Don't worry about me, son. Come along, Kingfish, ride it again. <laughs> yeah, Andy, with 30 or 40 bucks, I could buy Sapphire a real nice pedal instead of this crummy purse. about our anniversary. What do you mean it's about our anniversary? I can't tell you, but you're gonna see something tonight that's gonna make your eyes pop out. <laughs> Good heavens. What on earth would George be doing with a gun? I don't care what you say, Frank. I'm going to close up if you can't come over here. I'm not going to stay here alone. There's been too many robberies in the neighborhood lately to suit me. Why, just last night they tried to break into the Lamo dress shop. All right, I'll be right home. Yes? What is it? Look, madam, I got a gun here and I want some money. <laughs> What's wrong? Well, of all things. Operator! Operator! Somebody just tried to hold me up. Get the police! Quick! Quick! Hello, Andy. Come on in. Morning, Kingfish. What's new in the paper? Oh, not a thing, Andy. Not a thing. How'd you make out with the gun last night? Not so good, Andy. I still got the thing home in my drawer. Sapphire's still mad at me, too. Wouldn't even speak to me this morning. Oh, that's where it goes, all right. Hmm. I see we had a little excitement around here last night. Right here in our neighborhood, too. That's so? Yeah, over at Anderson's pawn shop. Some fella tried to hold it up. That's a funny coincidence. I was in Anderson Pawn Shop myself last night, 
I hope they get the dirty crook. It says here, uh, when the assailant pulled the gun on the proprietor, Ms. Anderson, she fainted. She fainted when I was in there, too. She must do that a lot. Oh, but I think you're going to catch the fellow all right. You got a good description of it right here. According to Ms. Anderson, the hold-up man was wearing a checkered vest, a cutaway coat, and a gray fedora. Andy, holy smoke. They think I was the one who robbed the pawn shop. Why don't you call them up and tell them they done made a mistake? Tell them you found the gun in the place. Yeah, that's the thing to do, all right. Operator, operator, uh, give me the police. Is you out of your head, stupid? You think they're gonna believe a cockeyed bull story like that? The next thing I know, I'll be up the river, setting in sanitary confinement. Kingfish, when you throw that place away, you ain't got nothing to back up your story. Well, why did you let me throw it away, you big dummy? Why did I? Well, what you gonna do? I don't know, but I'm getting out of here. Uh, Mr. Kingfish, watch out for the... Slippery steps. Oh, is your head, Kingfish? No, never mind, Andy. A broken back don't mean a thing at a time like this. You better have another cup of coffee, Kingfish. You shaking something awful. Andy, what in the world is I gonna do? Uh, this is the worst thing that ever happened. Will you pass me the sugar, please? Thank you. With that description they got of you, they're bound to pick you up sooner or later. Andy, what is I gonna do? When Sapphire find this out, you're gonna break her heart. Oh, why did this have to happen on our 20th anniversary? Will you pass the ketchup, please? Thank you. But Andy, I know the first thing I gotta do is change these clothes, then find some way to hide out. Can I get you another cup of coffee, Mrs. Anderson? No, thank you. <laughs> Check, please. Hey, you. Who, me? Yeah, you. Oh, uh, what is it? You got a match? He wants a match. <laughs> slept a wink all night. Oh, what is I gonna do? The police is after me. They'll never believe I is innocent. I'm gonna have to run away. Some place where I can lose myself forever. Ah, the Foreign Legion. The French Foreign Legion. Allergic to camels. <laughs> I could be a beachcomber. <laughs> I know. I'll sail the seven seas. got the money for the boot fare. Honey, I ain't got time to go into no detail. I got to get out of town. I write you. Joyce, see, you come right back here. Police department. 
please. I give to hear a wooden door slam again. Stevens, are you there? Yes, I ain't going nowhere. You got a visitor. A visitor? Oh, Sapphire, I knew you would come. I knew you wouldn't desert me. Oh, darling, darling, where is you, darling? Here I is, darling. Oh, Carol. Five minutes. Okay. Uh, Kingfish, this is a nasty robbery rap they done pinned on you. Calhoun, you got to get me out of here. I am innocent, completely innocent. Innocent? Well, now, that's liable to slow me down a little. I ain't never had a client that is innocent before. Calhoun, <laughs> that's the worst mess I ever done been in. You were my lawyer. Yeah, things look bad. They got a lot of circumstantial evidence against you. But I is happy to tell you that I is getting you out of this mess. Calhoun, how you gonna do it? Never you mind. But when I put you on the stand tomorrow afternoon, we wins the case. I've got everything in the bag. Kingfish, i got a foolproof scheme of how to get you out of this whole mess. When I make my point, the judge is gonna throw the case right out of court. That's fine, Calhoun. That's fine. Okay. Hey, boy, come on, get me out of this thing. <laughs> Calhoun, you're a great lawyer. A great lawyer, Calhoun. Uh, incidentally, I had arranged to have the opening of your trial delayed till tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock. As long as you're gonna be in here, you may as well get as many free meals as you can. Uh, we'll see you later. Mama, I don't care how it comes out tomorrow. I'm leaving, George, for good. I knew he'd come to no good. I knew it the first time he come to the house. Didn't like his looks. I sat too close together. Well, it's all over and done with. I never want to see him nor speak to him again. <laughs> I hope he gets the chair. Now, that is one potato I'd like to see French fried. <laughs> hear ye, hear ye. Court of Special Session, State of New York, Part 12, is now convening. Case of the People versus George Stevens, attempted armed robbery. Judge Heaven L. Watkins presiding. Order, please. Is the district attorney's office ready? We're ready, Your Honor. Proceed. Your Honor, we intend to prove that on the third day of this month, the defendant, George Stevens, entered Anderson's pawn shop with a loaded revolver. We will show it was a cold, calculated attempt to rob this defenseless woman. Will Mrs. Anderson please take the stand? Yes, sir. He pointed a gun at me and said, I want some money. And then, Mrs. Anderson, upon seeing the gun, you fainted, thus frightening the defendant who ran from your store? That's correct. Thank you. That'll be all. <laughs> Mr. Brown, you've testified to the sterling character of Mr. Stevens. You've testified that you've known him for a long, long time. About how long would that be? Oh, 15 or 20 years. I see. Now, would you mind telling the court under just what circumstances you met the defendant? Well, about 18 years ago, at a carnival, I reached in my pocket to get my wallet and shook hands with Mr. Stevens. <laughs> oh, it ain't like it sounds, mister. Uh, I found out later that collecting wallets was just a hobby of his. Order, please. Continue, please. No further questions, Your Honor. Your witness, Counselor. Go ahead and question him, Calhoun. Ask him where I got the gun from. Now, wait a minute. I'm the lawyer here. We don't need him. I got the case in the bag anyway. No questions, Your Honor. You may step down, Mr. Brown. Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Your Honor, as counsel for the defense, I emphatically denies the accusations of the prosecutor. I intend to prove that my client entered Anderson's pawn shop for the most innocent of reasons, and that robbery was furthest from the mind of this innocent man. <laughs> Your Honor, as my first witness, I would like to call to the stand the defendant, George Kingfish Stevens. Step up there, bud. <laughs> Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you? I do. <laughs> Your Honor, 
Your full name is George Kingfish Stevens? Uh, it is. At this point, Your Honor, I would like to show that my client had no intentions of committing a holdup. And I intend to prove that point beyond the slightest shadow of a doubt. Your Honor, when my client went into that pawn shop, he went in there with a gun that could not possibly be fired under any circumstance whatsoever. And right here and now, I intend to offer conclusive proof to that statement. Your Honor, you can pull the trigger of this revolver as much as you please, and it will not... Your Honor, I would like to ask the court's permission to resign from the case. Bailiff, remove the counselor for the defense from this courtroom. Mr. Stevens, in the interests of justice, there are a few questions I would like to ask you. You say you found this gun. Where did you find it? Well, Your Honor, that's what I've been trying to say. I, I bought the purse for my wife's anniversary, and the gun was in the purse. So I recited that I'd hock the thing so I could buy my wife a real nice present. Your Honor, this is obviously a trumped up and ridiculous story. You're out of order. Where is this purse now? Well, uh, I done throw it away. Well, Mr. Stevens, you may or may not be telling the truth, but in the absence of this purse, I'm, I'm afraid you haven't got much of a defense. Yes, that's true, Your Honor. Well, we've had a long day. I hereby recess this court until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, at which time I will give my decision in this case. Court dismissed. Yeah, Amos. And then the judge said, in the absence of the purse, Mr. Stevens, I'm afraid you ain't got much of a defense. Yeah, I guess it don't look too good for the kingfish. If he only hadn't thrown that food purse away. But I can't help thinking that the kingfish is innocent and heaven gonna take care of it. Well, I hope heaven do something fast. <laughs> What'd you do that for? <laughs> conk me on the top of the head with your fist. And I didn't conk you on the head with my fist. Well, somebody done conked me. And ain't nobody here but us two. Oh, don't be silly, Annie. It's only a figment of your imagination. Yeah, I guess that's right. Now you've done it again. Cut it out. And I didn't do nothing. This is a fine time to be playing games when the kingfish is about to go to jail just because he threw it away a purse. Uh, holy smoke, a purse. Amos, that's the purse the kingfish threw it away. Amos? That heaven show sure gives service. Come on. <laughs> and so from the contents of this bag, it appears that Mr. Stevens was telling the truth. This bag belonged to a woman who at the present time is in the custody of the law and has confessed to disposing of the bag with a gun in it. Uh, yes, sir, Your Honor, the gun was in there. This establishes and proves your innocence of the robbery charge, Mr. Stevens. But in this entire matter, your actions were not those of a citizen who has respect for law and order. This gun should have been immediately turned over to the police department. Yes, sir. Do you realize that it is against the law in the state of New York to carry a gun? Yes, sir. Do you realize that it is against the law in the state of New York to pawn an article that doesn't belong to you? Yes, sir. I am going to dismiss this case. But tell me one thing, Stevens. If you should ever find a gun like this again, what would you do? Pawn it in New Jersey. 